today, friends of Buzzy. So today I've got something that I think actually is really good about how to decrease the severity or potentially the spread of coronavirus 19 and also a little bit off the beaten path for our usual non-pharmacologic pain management, but there is a additional pharmacologic pain management that I'll talk about at the end. So the first thing I wanna talk about is a rabbit hole I have been down for the past couple weeks, and it is nasal irrigation to decrease the intensity of coronavirus or perhaps even the development of it. So there are a couple things that make me think that this is something that is really um, has good potential. So the first thing is the age distribution of the people who get coronavirus. Very, very rare in children, very common in older people. You know what else is very rare in children? Having sinuses. So here is a uh, cool little plastic model of your sinuses. It turns out children are not born with developed sinuses. They don't get fully developed cavities up in their heads until their teenage years. In contrast, older people, particularly males, have giant nasal cavities. So the proportion of severe illness that we're seeing could be related to how big the area is. We know that the virus is primarily cultured from the nasal sinus. So this is the nose, so the nasopharynx, the pharynx is the throat part. So the way that you get the test done if you go to a drive-through testing place is they're gonna put a swab up your nose and try to go back in here. That's where the virus hangs out, that's where it replicates. So the other thing we know about this virus is the time. It takes a lot of time from when you are exposed to when you start feeling symptoms to when you get really sick. And the symptoms tend to progress non-smelling, then throat, then down into the lungs. This really implies that the virus has to replicate in a manner that it takes a long time and that actually physically is marching down into the lungs. And so that time implies that if we can get rid of some of the invaders when they're still in the nose, they may not develop enough viral load to be able to get down into the lungs until our immune system figures out what's going on and can get rid of it. So other viruses, um, it turns out that there are studies in particularly the last five years that look at nasal irrigation for viral load, for uh, perpetual sinusitis and infection in the nose. And what it finds that even with the common cold, even when started within 48 hours of symptoms, so you know how viruses spread, I mean like going viral. So the horse has already left the barn and yet they're starting to do irrigation then, it still works. It still decreases statistically significantly the impact of the cold, the virus, uh, the duration of symptoms, and the severity of symptoms. So with other viruses, we've got some idea that even after it's already gone viral, uh, it can help. So this particular virus, one thing we know about coronavirus is that it is very sensitive to the acidity or alkalinity, we call it the pH, in the nose for it to infect the cells. So what happens is you've got the, the little crown thing gloms on to the SARS-2 receptor and while it's stuck on, the cells come together and they fuse. And so this fusion has to happen at a very specific level of acidity and it turns out that other coronaviruses either have to have an acid pH or a neutral pH to fuse. So one thing we're gonna talk about is making it a little more alkaline with baking soda to try to decrease that fusion. So the final thing, in other countries, nasal irrigation is common. Um, I think it started with the Ayurvedic, Ayurvedic, the Indian traditions, and you've heard of neti pots, um, that comes from an Indian word, but the places now where they do up to 80% of the population does nasal irrigation as a standard kind of brush your teeth cleaning, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam. 
there are no deaths from coronavirus in Vietnam. Uh, when last I looked, it was 47 in Thailand. Even when patient 17 came into Vietnam and um, was on a street with a densely populated area with a lot of people with no protections, none of the rest of them got infected. So I am excited that Vanderbilt is gonna be testing this with a little bit of soap, which is something that can break the, the liquid layers. But what I wanna talk about is how easy it is to do high pressure nasal irrigation. So I'm gonna do this with you guys. And so here is a uh, sinus rinse by Neomed. This is just water that I have boiled for five minutes and it's a little bit uh, warm. And what I'm gonna do is take a teaspoon of baking soda. So this is a half teaspoon. So this is gonna get us the alkalinity and so there's a teaspoon of baking soda and then we want um, hypertonic saline solution we want it to be a little more salty than you your normal blood would be because that's going to pull fluid out of your nasal cavities i right now don't have any snot so i'm going to just do normal um salinic normal um hypertonic, normatonic. Uh, so I'm just gonna do a one half teaspoon of salt. And then uh, I'm gonna dump this into my little neti pot action. All right, and so while that's dissolving, so the other thing that um, the National Health Service in the UK has been telling ear, nose, and throat doctors to do is to put in a little bit of iodine. So iodine um, kills bacteria. Um, COVID is particularly sensitive to it. The thing about iodine is that it stains like crazy. And I had been really unsure about whether or not it was worth doing because in wounds, um, I was taught not to irrigate wounds with this because it, increased, it, it decreases the amount of white blood cells that can fight infection. And I read a lot over the weekend and um, thanks to Cindy Schiff, a nurse who said, no, it's fine in the nose. I read it is indeed, it's fine in the nose. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this bacteria fighting in. You can see how much it changes color. I'm gonna just, you know, so it's stuck. I'm gonna make sure I put it in there. All right, so this will stain your fingers and everything. All right, so I'm using a um, a Neomed sinus irrigator for a couple reasons. One thing is I don't do very well with the neti pot. I've tried it before, not so great. Um, second thing is that one of the studies uh, done in 2018 found that higher pressure seemed to be better than low pressure. And so low pressure, like the, the neti pot type thing, um, is just gravity. And this is actually spraying it up there. So here we go. So you can keep breathing while you're doing it. Woo! And I'm gonna try doing it on both sides. And I think that it's important during this crisis that personal um, vanity has no place. So I'm dribbling my snot down in here for you. It does feel really weird like, it feels like when you're swimming and you accidentally get something up your nose. So, you know, not the most pleasant. This is one cup of water. All right, I'll go one more time up the other side. There's as much pressure as I could get. And... Woo, baby! All right, so turns out that it's not that staining to have the iodine in. Um, I used to have a teaspoon and my nose doesn't seem to have like orange iodine on it. So that's cool. Um, I never felt like it was at the back of my throat, like I was having any trouble breathing, but it definitely, um, I tried it earlier with a little packet that they put inside there and using the extra salt and the extra baking soda does sting more and it's making my nose run.
Um, but I, I think this is really something that has to be studied further, but we already know that it helps other viruses. We know countries where they do this routinely, they're not dying. And we know that, that the National Health Service in the UK is recommending this widely. So I cannot see a single reason, um, particularly if you've been exposed or you're working with people who do have it, I, I can see no reason not to do this. I'm gonna do it twice a day and hopefully we can get some randomized controlled trials on this done quickly. Is there a taste to the rinse? Ah. The question is, is there a taste to the rinse? Um, it tastes salty. Otherwise, it, no taste, but um, it tastes salty. And again, my nose feels like it's running. Um, so the other thing I wanna talk about is um, the pain management. So in our, in our pain care boxes, we've got the what works for shot, or what um, we've got what works for pain, and 50 um, evidence-based, ooh, I think you're gonna drip for a while. I think this is the, the hypertonic thing, pulling out the, pulling it out. Um, so the evidence-based ways to deal with pain. So one thing over the weekend that I will post a link to is Melissa with fibromyalgia. Um, she makes fantastic blogs about chronic pain and how to deal with them. And what she has found that's working for her is low-dose naltrexone. So naltrexone is um, an agonist, um, antagonist to the mu receptor for opioids. Basically, if you take naltrexone, it's going to um, kick off the opioids. It's like the Narcan that you've heard of. But the low, dose, um, low doses of it have been used for sickle cell pain and other kinds of pain, and it's working well for her. And the nice thing is it doesn't have any of the side effects that um, gabapentin, for example, do. So n no matter what, Melissa with fibromyalgia is, um, Melissa versus fibromyalgia is a great blog, but I'm gonna put that on to go along with, here's all of our drug-free mechanisms, but if you can get a prescription and it's something that you wanna try, this is one to talk to your doctor about if you have chronic pain. All right, my friends. Um, as you know, our NIH research is in low back pain and in vibration. Uh, there is a chance that there is research money out there to, to investigate prospectively people who test positive to see how this changes symptoms and progression of serious illness. And I, I think we need something that's going to change our direction because as this passes through, we don't have any way to really treat it until the, the remdesivir and other trials are done. So having something people can do at home, I think is really an important and exciting piece of hope. So um, I hope you enjoyed me uh, dribbling snot everywhere on your behalf, and hopefully we'll get some good research soon. And I, I feel that it is gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. <laughs>